What is up? Today we're going over an explosive strength upper body lift. I'm Coach Nick, I'm a certified strength and conditioning coach, and I'm gonna take you through how I would normally program an athlete or a person who's trying to really start to peak and get that explosive power for their upper body. So let's get into it. So when it comes to developing really explosive power for the upper body, we need to have a, an established base of strength. So I'll typically program this in our, our typically around our third phase after we've built a base of strength and we've started to do a little bit of power movements and now we're really gonna start to ramp up the velocity side of the power equation. Power ultimately and explosiveness is about power which is force, so the maximum amount of force you can produce, think like one rep bench max. And then there's the velocity component where you're moving super fast and quick. So with this workout, we're trying to maximize that power component. So having both high force output and high velocity movements to ultimately make ourselves more powerful and more explosive. When we're going into this, so the warm up, I want to have a pretty decent warm up before getting into any sort of power development. So we get our body, our central nervous system's warmed up. We got a lot of blood flow, we're feeling healthy. We're not stiff at all, so we can actually give the most amount of effort when we get into the actual power complex, the strength and power complex that we're gonna get later. So the first thing I'll typically do is do a PVC pipe complex where we're starting to open up the joints, stretching out a little bit, taking it through some full range of motion. So typically we'll be going overhead, back and front, for about 10 reps, starting to open up the chest a little bit. Then we'll do a clockwise and counterclockwise motion just to add a little bit of fluidity and that natural movement of the scapula in the back here to start to open it up uh, before ultimately getting a little bit of a stretch side to side with it just to, just to start to open us up a little bit so we're feeling good and we're not rounded forward with our shoulders on a big proud chest when we're going into this. Now, this is primarily going to be a push day, but we need to make sure that our, our opposite muscles, our antagonistic muscles are also warm and fired up and ready to go because they are gonna be what are helping stabilize our upper body as we are producing that super fast explosive movements during the push. So we'll do band pull aparts. Typically I'll do anywhere from one to two sets, anywhere from 10, 15, maybe even up to 20 reps if I really wanna to start to uh, get some muscle developed. Now, after we go and we finish up with the banded pull aparts, then we'll do a little prehab work. So we're gonna work, take our shoulders through a full range of motion. So I like what's called a Cuban press, where we are raising our elbows up, not a heavy weight, so anywhere from like two and a half, maybe up to 10 pounds, we're raising our arms up, bringing our shoulders up. We're rotating our palms overhead nice and slow, pinching and pulling our scapula back, so we're setting our back and then press overhead. As we press overhead, we're trying to open up our mobility in our shoulders so we're not letting our abs flare, we're keeping our abs tight, pressing overhead before then pulling it back down and reversing the motion back down. So typically I'll do one to two sets, around eight to 10 reps to start to open that up before we go into a hand release push-up. So I wanna get the actual chest, shoulders, and triceps working but I like the variation of a, a hand release push-up because you get a little bit extra back engagement as you pull your hands back, lift your palms off the ground, squeeze your shoulder blade. That's gonna be the position that we're setting our back with when we get into our banded bench press and some of the other exercises later. So typically I'll do one to two sets, anywhere from eight to 10 reps, just to start to wake up the chest, again, hit that back a little bit more before moving on. And then finally, this is probably one of the most important pieces is priming your central nervous system, okay? We got it nice and warm, but now I wanna fire it up. I wanna get that central nervous system, which is the main, largely responsible for how much force and how powerful and how quick you can use that strength to develop that explosive power. So I'll prime our central nervous system by doing a upper body plow metrics. It's very easy, very simple. There's just maximal intent and force that you're trying to produce with some med ball floor pass. And I'll typically do anywhere from one to two sets 10 reps, moving fast, being violent, so that way I can prepare myself before we go into our strength and power complex. So now that we got warmed up, we're gonna get after it, okay? This is where the money is, this is where we're gonna get all of our work in, and this is where we're gonna get the results that we want. So one big misconception when we're getting into power and explosiveness is that we wanna feel like we did a lot of work. Well, it's actually the opposite. It's very intentional, low volume 
max effort reps and you let your body recover. So when you're developing power, you have to hit a certain threshold of power and velocity within your movements in order to tell your body like, hey, I need to make changes and I need to be able to produce force even faster. So if you're doing a lot of high volume with your power and explosive work, just like in plyometrics, you're gonna ultimately defeat the purpose because you're not gonna be able to hit a high enough uh, threshold or motor unit recruitment force power output in order to tell your body to be like, hey, I need to get stronger, I need to get more explosive. So we typically keep the volume around five reps or less when we're doing any sort of upper body plyometric and we have ample adequate recovery between this. So with this complex, what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be taking advantage of something that's called post-activation potentiation. So it's just a big fancy word to mean that we are priming our muscles with a heavy movement, our banded bench press, to then tell our body, hey, we need to produce that much force, that much strength, before we go into a plyometric movement, your body's gonna think, I still need to produce that much amount of force, but the load's gonna be a lot lighter, so you're gonna have the high level of force, but you're also gonna get the high velocity maximizing that power component. So, we are doing a complex. So, we have banded bench press, drop-in plyo push-ups, and med ball shot put throws. Everything is three sets of five, we have about 15 seconds of rest in between the first two, and then we're taking a long, ample rest after the med ball shot put. So let's get into the banded bench press. So when we're doing the banded bench press, we're trying to focus on the acceleration and force output. So typically what I recommend is anywhere from 40 all the way up to 60, maybe 65% of your one rep max, but you're gonna add on the band, which is gonna add tension as you get further and further up on that lift. This is called accommodating resistance. It's great for helping develop a more average peak power output throughout the entire range of motion. So the biggest key with this is to accelerate all the way through the movement as fast as you possibly can and to keep that speed up. We're gonna get into a movement where we really have to overcome a lot of force quickly. We're working on what's called the amortization phase. So the drop-in push-up, we're from an elevated position, we drop in, so we're adding force down rather than just like a normal push-up. So we have to, when we land, we have to click, quickly absorb and then get out. And that, for a lot of people, sports, athletes, whatever it is, it's all about being able to transition that force to be that explosive athlete. So that's what we're mimicking here with the drop-in plyo push-up. And then the final piece of this workout is our med ball shot put. So these first two, we are working through different phases in or different spectrums on the force velocity curve. We have more uh, up on the strength speed, maybe touching a little bit of the power. Then we're moving into a more pow straight power movement on the force velocity curve with the drop and pile pushup. But now we, we, we really don't want to leave that velocity component out because that is going to be essential for us being that quick explosive athlete, especially in our upper body. So we're adding a med ball shot put where the velocity of the arm and the rotation and the amount of force that has to come quickly is with the med ball shot put throw. So with this, everything with the med ball throws, you gotta be violent, max intention, max effort, every single rep. And that's how we're gonna work through the different spectrum points of the force velocity curve to maximize your explosive power. Now after we got a lot of our power work in for our upper body, we need to make sure that we're still a well-rounded athlete and we're on a well-rounded person because when we're in sports and when we're in competition, it's not just our chest that's doing a lot of that power generation. A lot of it comes from the core and the hips and how coordinated and fast we can link everything together to make that explosive punch, push, stiff arm, whatever it ends up being for you. So one exercise we really love is called the landmine rotor press. It's a huge coordination piece, a big, a lot of transfer of force happening, and it allows you to really start to link everything together to maximize the force output in a more athletic movement in order to help your overall performance. So do typically around three sets, five reps each side. Then we're gonna get into a med ball scoop toss. So we're staying on the core with this, okay? So now we're working just the hips, a little bit lower part of the segment, 
from the hips into the core, working some rotational power with our med ball scoop toss. Again, same thing with this one, the med ball, you're trying to throw that ball through the wall, you're trying to pop the ball, explode it, and absolutely give everything you got during these throws. Big key to this is to not just use your hips and turn like a robot. We wanna coil up a little bit, load our legs, push off the leg, turn our hips hard, and then follow through with our upper body going into the throws. And then lastly, to get a little bit of tricep work, more, a little bit more core coming from the sagittal plane rather than the rotational and transverse plane, we're gonna do a med ball soccer toss. With this, you wanna start with a light ball. This is a very high velocity movement. You're taking a big step, so again, we're starting the force generating from the legs. It's transferring up through the hips, under the core, and then out the arms, unleashing all that power, all that explosiveness, and trying to pop that ball. So if you're looking to become more powerful and more explosive, give this workout a try, share it with your friends, go in there, do it together. It's a hell of a lot of fun. You're gonna feel really strong and really powerful after you get done with this, and I hope to see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this and you want more content like that, Please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share this with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video.